In this video, we're going to specifically talk about how to name cycloalkanes. With cycloalkanes, we don't have to do anything different to the suffix. All we have to do is add a cyclo to the beginning of the root name to indicate that the molecule is cyclic. Any cycloalkyl substituents, we would of course use the suffix yl. One example would be something like a cyclopentane with a cyclopropyl group attached. The parent chain would be here. And the substituent is a cyclopropyl group. In this case, we don't even have to add any numbers because there's really only one place to put that cyclopropyl group. It's the same thing if you put it here, 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 or here. Let's look at some more cycloalkane examples. In this case, the parent chain is eight carbons. So we have an octane. Our substituents then are a methyl group and a cyclopentyl group at position two. We number from the left to put the first substituent at position two, one, two. If we number from the right, we won't get this substituent until one, two, three, four, five, six. Cyclo is involved in the alphabetical ordering, so cyclopentyl is placed before methyl when we put all of this together. In this example here, our parent chain is the cyclooctane. That's because it has more carbons. This chain over here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So this becomes our substituent. When we're numbering these more complicated substituents, we number from the point of attachment to the parent chain. So that means that there is a methyl group at position one. And because we have a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain, that means that we have a hexyl. Put this all together, and we have a 1-methyl hexyl. This goes in parentheses because it's a substituent attached to the main cyclooctane ring. Here are a few more examples. In this first one, the parent chain is here, four carbons long. It's important to recognize that the cyclopropyl group here is not part of the parent chain. We're going to start numbering our parent chain here starting at one. That means we have a butane with a methyl group here at position two and a cyclopropyl group at position one. Put this all together and we get one cyclopropyl two methylbutane. Now let's look at our next example. Here's our parent chain here. It's seven carbons long, so we have a cycloheptane. We have two methyl groups, and we have one ethyl group. Now we have to figure out how to order our substituents and number. If we start from this methyl group here, we will have substituents at one, four, and five. If we start from the methyl group here, we will have substituents at one, two, and five. We could also start from the ethyl group and also give the substituents at one, two, and five. One, two, five is less than one, four, five, so this is the approach that we're going to want to use. The numbering is the same if we start with ethyl versus if we start with methyl, so we'll use alphabetical ordering to break the tie. Since E comes before M alphabetically, we'll number one, and then two. So what we did was we first gave the substituents the lowest possible numbers, then we used alphabetical order to break any ties. If we put everything together, that means we will have one ethyl, two five dimethyl cycloheptane.
That wraps up naming for cycloalkanes, and we'll do more on naming in the next video.